So today I would like to start uh, by asking you a question. So do you remember this time when maybe you were four years old, you really liked dinosaurs and you also liked drawing? So maybe one day your parents asked you, can you do draw a giraffe for us? And you said like, yes, I will do so. So you ran into your room, you took the crayons, you took a piece of paper, and soon the masterpiece was ready. So then what you did, probably ran back to your parents. However, maybe they were no longer there, which was confusing. So you went looking for them around the house and you found them in a kitchen. And they took the drawing and said, oh yeah, that's, that's really nice, thank you for that. However, you have never seen the drawing being put on the wall in the living room for all of the guests to see, which was confusing to you, right? Um, so this thing that you got back then is also something that you may feel right now in your job, for example, as a software engineer. And this is also something that sometimes I experience. So my name is Paulina, and today I will tell you a little bit about the intricate art of making your internal clients happy. And all of this from the perspective of uh, infrastructure team. So what we have on our plate today. First, uh, we'll start with explaining ourselves what this internal client is. Then I will tell you a few words about my team. Then we'll proceed to uh, like establish what infra team is. And then we'll move on to the challenges and something that you are probably most interested in, so solutions. And um, here I will also mention what worked best for my team. And at the end, the summary. Okay, so we are probably familiar with this pattern. So we have your company, in your company you have some Team X, and this Team X provides some sort of product, some value to somebody outside of the company. Then this person is your external client. But it may also be the case that your team does not provide value for somebody outside of the company. Rather, your team works for another team. And then this team X becomes your internal client. Uh, you may wonder, what are the differences? Are there any between external and internal clients? So first up, usually external clients ask you to do something. They want to get some value, some product. But with internal clients, it may not be the case. Internal clients, um, basically with them, uh, you are the one responsible to learn what they need. Uh, you need to create this value to, uh, for them and then try to convince them that, yes, this is something that will benefit you. Next up. Uh, so with external clients, it is pretty straightforward because they pay you for the value that they get. But um, and with internal clients, it is not the case. Obviously, the employer pays you, but there is no direct cash flow between your team and uh, your client's team. Um, and what comes with that? When the external client ask you to do something and they pay for it, basically they will be most likely interested in the progress. But with internal clients, it may not be the case. They may be more focused on their own priorities to deliver to their client than learning about some tools that they may use or maybe not. Um, so a few words about my team. I work at Brainy, uh, where we deliver our products to uh, over 300 million unique users monthly. Uh, and these users come from all over the world. So Europe, the United States, but also, for example, from India or Indonesia. 
Uh, and at Verini, my team is called Machine Learning Infra Team, and uh, there are eight people uh, with, as you can see, very diverse roles. I am a machine learning engineer in the team. Uh, and my team belongs to the department uh, of AI services where we have five teams in total, and uh, this makes around 50 people on board. So, as I mentioned, I worked in machine learning infra team, but what this infra team is? Um, the story starts with our CTO, who had worked with a couple of different com companies, and he observed uh, a pattern that whenever you, you have a given domain, uh, it usually turns out that uh, the teams in the domain develop their own toolboxes which may be, for example, a set of scripts that make their life easier, or maybe they try different tools and find which of them work best. Uh, and they collect all of those things into uh, their own toolbox. But what the CTO also observed is that you can take another approach, so have a dedicated infra team for the domain uh, and then this team can um, see what are the common patterns between the teams and develop a toolbox that will be generic enough to fit many teams, but that will also bring all of them the value. So what happens next? Basically, this toolbox can be um, given to each of uh, the teams and the teams can use it. And what is there for us? Like, what we want to get from this, basically. Uh, those teams can focus only on their own work, their own priorities, and they don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and what comes with that is that, you know, no reinventing the wheel, no time spent on that, so, the costs go down. Basically, in the end, it benefits the company. Uh, as, and as you might expect, my team follows this pattern, so we are in constant communication with each of the teams. So we gather requirements, we get feedback from them, we learn about the pro their projects. Um, but what they get from us is value. It can be like a standard, it can be specific to, or maybe something else. Um, and if you wonder about specific responsibilities of my team, uh, as you may expect, first it is research because we need to learn about different options that we want to try. Uh, and out of that, we may propose standards. And sometimes we are also developing our own internal tools, most likely in Python. Uh, then when the standard is in place, we can also help with the adoption, uh, or we can help with uh, architecture design, or in general, we can advise the teams. So now let's take a moment to consider what may be a challenge in such a team. Think about it for a moment. Okay, maybe something already popped up in your head. Uh, when I was thinking about it, quite a few things popped up. Actually, a lot of things. Uh, and when I was thinking more about the topic, uh, those things fell into three categories. It was timing, communication, and adoption. So let's see what exactly is here. Uh, when it comes to timing, I think it is important to consider the context of my team. So as I mentioned, right now we have 50 people on board, but back in January of 2021, it was more like 10 people. Uh, and in our company, the first machine learning initiatives um, date back to around 2016. And my team was created 
in April, let's say, I think around this time of uh, 2021. And as you might expect, there was a rapid growth in the department happening back then. So um, throughout the recent months, um, what we faced when it comes to timing, basically, we were often too late with our solutions because some of the teams already um, came up with their own ways of doing things. So it created this thing of being behind with what the teams do. Sometimes we're in time, but, uh, you know, we were in talks with specific team and they said they will need a sol given solution in I don't know, a few weeks, a specific four weeks. So we proceeded to work on that. Uh, and we were almost ready, like one week to go. But suddenly we learned that the priorities of this team, so our client, changed. And they no longer need this solution. OK, but there is also the third scenario, uh, which is too early. Sometimes we tended to anticipate the needs of our clients. So we were asking them, OK, so what will you work on in two months? And they say something, something, and we'll need such tools. Great for us. We, can, we have time. We can develop uh, such a toolbox for them. Um, but uh, you know, sometimes it ended up that um, those tools seemed artificial because they were just too early. There was nobody right there to take it and use it immediately. It may be a few weeks or even months before um, such a tool or standard will be used. So that's about timing, but let's consider the challenges of adoption. And let's be sp specific here. Let's imagine a scenario that your team developed an internal library, internal tool, uh, so as to make the management of EC2 instances on AWS easier, especially uh, for the specific case of uh, machine learning. Um, okay, uh, so you may think that um, this is something that may be useful for everybody in the department, but um, it turns out that not always. People were not very eager to immediately adopt it. And here we need to consider a few questions. So first, were they aware of it? I think most of them were, at least to some extent, but still there were people who were not. Maybe they did not attend meetings where we talked about the solution. So, yeah. Then they could not adopt it even in the, if they needed it because they were not aware that it existed. But if yes, then we are on the right track. But the next question is, do they trust it? Uh, and uh, here, the situation may be, you know, it may be that uh, they believe that they have more experience in the area and they think that uh, maybe this solution that we propose will not work for them. Uh, or maybe they have uh, their own tool already in place. They don't want to switch. But if they trust it, again, very good. But another question is, do they have time? Uh, I believe it is crucial because if they have their own priorities, their own tasks at hand, uh, especially when the time is very tight for them, they would rather invest in delivering their own uh, tasks than learning about some tool that may benefit them in few weeks, but maybe not. Who knows? Uh, but if they have time, great. Um, so is it the perfect scenario? Not always, because sometimes 
they may not be involved enough to learn about the standards, uh, to try them out in their own work, uh, or they may need help with getting started. However, they never reach out for such a help. And we may not be aware that there is a person who would like to check given solution, uh, but uh, they just need even like 15 minutes intro to that tool. And that's about adoption. Let's consider communication. Uh, I think we all know that communication is the key, whether you're a software engineer or work in a completely different field. When it comes to challenges that we face there, the obvious one is basically deficits in communication. Um, and it may be from both sides, so we may not reach out to everybody or we may not talk enough about the possible solutions. But on the other hand, our client may not let us know about all of the priority changes, uh, all of the um, things that they suddenly need. Um, the other thing is uh, something that I found quite interesting. Mm, and this is misunderstanding the role of infra team. And what comes here? Uh, people uh, do not know why we need standards. What are possible benefits from that? Uh, and sometimes they may feel that uh, we as infra team are pushing some solutions on them. And then our team is being seen rather as an obstacle. Uh, and it all creates this thing of us versus them, which is not very healthy for the department. And another thing here is that sometimes uh, there are people who would like to voice their opinions. So for example, uh, we as infra team would like to propose a standard. So we ask the community, uh, hey, uh, we have such a tool. Is it something that uh, will be okay for you? Or maybe you see some problems, possible problems with that. Uh, and people may not voice their opinions, for example, because mm, they may not have time. Again, they may be focused on something different. And if they want to voice their opinion, yet they don't have this time, later it may turn out that they are not okay with the decisions made. <sighs> okay, it all seems like the, um, a lot of different things that may go wrong. Uh, but I believe that instead of focusing on challenges, problems, it is better to focus on solutions. So I guess that right now you expect magical solutions, but uh, I will not give you magical ones, rather possible solutions. So something that we tried and I can tell you if it worked or maybe not. And again, here we will revisit the same categories as before, but I will add one more, which is the category of involvement. I believe it somehow emerges from uh, the things that I already mentioned. So let's not wait. Let's jump right into it. When it comes to timing, we all know um, those scenarios. And I believe some of those can be solved with communication, which we also tried, obviously. But as a team, we realized that it is not enough. It is not enough, and we need to try something else. And what we decided to do is to embrace it. Embrace the fact that these situations used to happen, happen right now, and will happen. But we may take advantage out of those. First up, uh, if there is a team that already developed their own solution for a given um, problem, maybe their own uh, library, um, maybe another tool, they, they tried something, they liked it, what we can do is take it and evaluate. Because maybe this solution is something that can be distributed to the other teams and may benefit uh, also them. Uh, obviously, we need to check uh, if this is generic enough. Maybe we need to tweak something. But this is a great starting point. Uh, and it also feels more organic. 
uh, once you are using something that one of the uh, teams already tested and something that worked for them. Um, okay, but this is only one thing. The other thing is that is also uh, something that we need to remember about is that, okay, we may deliver something that will not be used for the next few weeks or even few months. Um, but maybe somebody will come in those few months and check out the solution on their case. Um, and maybe they will like it, then cool. But if not, it is okay to iterate on the solutions. If we get feedback after those few months that, hey, this that does not work for us, uh, can you change it? We can do it. We can iterate on the solutions, um, find some new tools that will work better. Or maybe, maybe in the market there's uh, this new shining tool that is a lot better than something that already is a standard for some time. Then let's check it. Let's see, uh, because maybe it makes sense to iterate and change the standard in our company. When it comes to adoption, again, uh, here let's uh, sp consider specific case. Mm, so at some point, our team um, was supposed to uh, find a solution that uh, will allow uh, machine learning practitioners to easily train machine learning models. So we did um, research, we contacted with our clients, um, and it turned out that uh, StageMaker pipelines is something that uh, seems okay as uh, as uh, as a tool to be used. And we also, um, as a team, developed like example project structure that we proposed to the teams to be used um, uh, for such uh, machine learning training pipelines projects. Uh, okay, but what we could do. We could take that and throw at our clients. And our clients most likely wouldn't be happy about it. Maybe they would not adopt it. <coughs> what we decided to do instead are four things. So first, we decided that we need to dive right into it. What it means. It may mean that we need to do a demo for our client so that they know uh, what this tool is about and they can get started from that point. Mm. This may work for some cases, but uh, in our case, it was not enough. We decided that we need to do something more and that's when the pilot program came. What it means, basically we took one of our team members and said that, okay, you need to go now to our client and work with them for two weeks, help them with the adoption, um, be another extra pair of hands uh, that uh, can help them. And we did so. Um, we performed the pilot, we helped the team to develop or more like uh, incorporate the solution quicker. They were quite happy with that, but what we got out of it is not only that some team adopted it, but we also get a lot of feedback in real time as the pilot program was going on. Um, we learned about all of the things that they struggled with in this topic, but also in other topics. Uh, and we got a lot of insights in what their work is like, uh, what are the pro their projects, and it is also important to know what your client is up to. <clears throat> okay, this is one thing, but what else you could do? You could also infiltrate them, what it means. If you have a colleague of yours in, our, uh, in another team, and sometimes maybe you chat over a coffee. Uh, you may also talk a little bit about your projects, the standards that you're proposing. Maybe your colleague will tell you, okay, so these are our projects. And 
you may find some common points and maybe your colleague will decide to try this solution that you proposed. And then, uh, if they try it and they like it, it may happen that they will promote this solution in their team. So there is no need to, um, you know, you go there, rather it happens more naturally. Uh, again, um, hear them out. So this is about gathering feedback and requirements, but what is important here is to act act within finite uh, time frame on the feedback that you got. You can also indoctrinate them. And what I mean here, <laughs> whenever there is somebody new joining the company, let them first play around with the tools. Let them learn the standards. Uh, and when they start with it, they can then proceed to work on the projects already knowing of the standards in place. And now comes the new category, so involvement. So our case was that we quite early on uh, in our team um, identified that we need to engage more with this internal community. Uh, so our natural thought was, let's connect with them. And what we could do, basically, uh, when it comes to connecting, we established sync meetings. So every month we are meeting with each of the teams, learning about what they are up to, what they need. We are telling them about our projects and um, we are seeing how we can help them in the future. This is okay, but not very engaging. <coughs> Another idea was to have knowledge training meetings, which is amazing as an idea, but when it comes to um, actually having it, it takes a lot of time of uh, the person that is presenting. So you may have uh, your client tell you about their project, but um, you know, uh, they can do so and people around the department can hear about this project, but first, this person needs to spend a few hours preparing for that. So people are not very willing to do so. Um, okay, so connecting worked okay, but not very well. So instead we decided to empower the people. And uh, we had two ideas here. One was the guilds. So a guild is a, a group of people focused on a specific topic. Um, so uh, in our department, we decided to have MLOps guild and data science guild. I am a part of MLOps ones, so I can tell you more about from this perspective. <laughs> this group is not very big, only a few people, but those are people who either work in a relevant role, so they are MLOps, or uh, they have experience in this area, or they are just interested in the topic. Um, and what is the result? When you have such an environment, it is best place to talk about those solutions. Um, and I have seen this in real life. Whenever there's something posted in the Slack channel of this group, um, some idea to be considered, Immediately, you have responses from at least a couple of people, which is amazing. This is what we want. Um, another thing that we decided to try uh, is to have our own internal open source solutions. Uh, so as a team, we started from this approach that, yeah, we should be the ones who are delivering the toolbox to another team. But as I mentioned, uh, this team may not be willing to use it because, for example, they don't trust it. Uh, so, yeah, at some point we decided this is not the way to go. Instead, we need to start the project, obviously. So maybe have some uh, version 1.0 of a given internal tool, internal Python library. But what we do later 
is we give it to our community and we tell them, okay, so this is something that we uh, started, but now it is yours. You can add pull requests, uh, you can report bugs and fix them if you want to. And you can add feature uh, requests whenever it is needed. And it changed a lot when people learned that, hey, right now I can write the code to this library. And since I will be using it, I know exactly what I will want. And in our case, it worked perfectly because people felt that right now they are in control of what they will be using. And they are very happy to contribute. They are very proud with uh, what can add to this tool that will be later used by them, but also by their colleagues. And we have the topic of communication again. And when it comes to the communication, I believe that there are a lot of books on the topic, there are a lot of um, talks on the topic, so I will not mention that. I will only tell you about one thing that we tried, which we called for ourselves laundry time. What was the laundry time? <clears throat> so um, basically, we decided that uh, some things are confusing for people in our department. So, um, yeah, they're confusing, but the air is also like not very clear. Uh, there are some things that maybe are not said well enough. So, we wanted to have this hard questions and honest answers uh, session. And how we did it? First, we asked everybody in the department, give us your toughest questions. Like, uh, whenever you felt like you, you don't know why the things are the way they are, think about this and ask the question. It may be, uh, why we need st standards? Why we have this strange infra team that uh, forces us to do uh, something or adopt a solution? Uh, why our priorities are like this? All of those sorts of questions. Um, and once we ask people to do so, they really did ask a lot of hard questions. I think there were uh, over 30 of them uh, being submitted and they were very diverse. And what happened next? Uh, once we had our internal summit in our headquarters, it was the first time that the department met in real life, uh, which was amazing by itself, but also we had this uh, Q&A session where those questions were answered by people higher in the management. And it was amazing because um, first, um, you could feel the air become cleaner when you attended the session more and more. People were also following up, so they got some answer, but maybe they were not satisfied with it. So uh, they were asking, uh, more questions. It was amazing in general, and I think people felt for the first time that they are being heard, that their um, confusions are uh, addressed, and that people really care about what is happening in the department. So for us, it was only three weeks ago, so I can only tell you about like short-term uh, results, but I already see a lot of collaboration emerging from that meeting, uh, and I believe uh, more great things will happen. And this is also something that I believe our department will be uh, having uh, more of in the future, so maybe in a few months we'll repeat the same thing. Okay. <laughs> so I think that right now I owe you this slide of what worked best for us. Uh, and those are uh, fixed by me. And the first one is the pilot programs. Why? Because we got a lot of uh, insights, a lot of feedback from the team that we collaborated with. Another one, open source solution because uh, this is something that empowers the people and gives them the control. 
and the laundry time 10 out of 10 I can recommend uh, so I mentioned quite a few things today maybe you remember some of them maybe there's one thing that stayed with you that you would like to try in your own company uh, maybe even if you are working with external clients maybe it will uh, maybe some of those points can work for you but in the end I believe that working with clients in general is an intricate art so it is only up to your creativity what you will try and what results you will get thank you very much Uh, okay, so do we have questions? So do you want to use the mic for anyone who's got questions? Uh, hey, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, I was wondering, like, how do you keep the direction of your internal open source software? Like, um, because the thing is, if everyone can pr uh, contribute, mm -hmm. like, at some point, someone may contribute to something that might not benefit the other teams as well. Like, how do you keep a, a general direction, let's say? Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so um, I believe we are in this uh, lucky position that we grew, but still there are like limited number of people. And as teams, we often collaborate. And when there are tools that are used by I don't know ten people, usually those people are in uh, in contact with each other, so they are also discussing what uh, what we want to add. And my team is also the one who is responsible for moderation of such efforts. So uh, basically, uh, we are happy to take any input, uh, but we may also consider, OK, is it something that will benefit all of the teams, or maybe only one of those? Uh, if one of those, then maybe we can have uh, a dedicated solution just for them and not introduce uh, this change in a uh, library that is used by wider group. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I'm definitely interested in this being part of a newly developing team at the moment, or a group of teams in my company. Um, you mentioned the idea of guilds. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm particularly interested in this. Is this something like uh, having cross-team teams, or is it like having um, specific topics that people will join into as mm -hmm. they like. Um, can you explain that a bit? Uh, okay, so um, the idea of guilds came from the backend domain, so we already tried guilds uh, there. Uh, and we decided, okay, let's see how it's going to work for us. Uh, and uh, right now, in such guilds, for example, the MLOps guilds, we have people from each of, of the machine learning teams in our company. And we strongly encourage that to have at least one representative from each of the teams because every team has their own perspective on the topic and this is very valuable uh, for us. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, those skills are focused on a specific topic or specific area. Uh, for us, we have well, the areas right now, so data science and MLOs. But uh, if we want to, we can have a guild that is focused on very specific tool, even like internal, uh, one of our internal tools. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I think it's quite common when uh, to have multiple like product teams or ML teams in a company and a single like infra team dedicated to them. Uh, how would you uh, manage uh, the overwhelming <laughs> growing backlog like of requests coming from those teams mm -hmm. okay uh, yeah uh, this is something that uh, we also find quite challenging because the teams work on quite diverse things and they need tools at many different points in time that, that, that's true so um, actually this is something that we did like a week ago for uh, the upcoming quarter so we gather all of the possible topics and we ask the teams, okay, these are the possible areas that you told us you will need. So each of the teams, please rate uh, how much impact on you will have this given solution. And when we have results from all of the teams, we can then have a specific metric that takes in consideration priority if 
of each of the teams, but also in how many teams uh, disparity is somewhere. Uh, yeah, and based on that, we had a spreadsheet uh, and uh, we sorted it, and the ones on the top are the ones that are being addressed in this quarter, the other ones will be addressed uh, possibly in the future. Thank you. Okay. Um, so thanks very much, Paulina. Thanks to all our speakers this morning, and hope you have a nice lunch. And the solution, as always, was a spreadsheet in the end. So. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.